So pneumonia day, yes. So why it is very much important to remember the pneumonia day is it is number one killer under uh, killer of children under the age of five because uh, pneumonia uh, does not uh, uh, pneumonia does not come into uh, limelight. Uh, there are many diseases which come under the limelight, but pneumonia uh, it doesn't even get a recognition. So among the children of five years, uh, uh, less than five years of age and older age group, if uh, if you take like more than 60 years of age. Pneumonia is very, very serious disease, serious disease and mortality rate is very much high compared to other diseases. So you should, uh, like we should recognize this and uh, this is the reason why we are celebrating a pneumonia day. So it chickens around one, uh, 155 million children under the age of five years and it kills 1.6 million each year. So it is regarded as number one killer of, uh, killer of children under the age of five. So the general motto for celebrating this day is a healthy lungs for all. So before we dive into uh, things, so first we should know why, why, uh, how was the pneumonia found out? On uh, there are many milestones that are in the uh, discovery of pneumonia. So we will see about it. Yes. So pneumonia, the poster which we are finding in the left side is nothing but it is the first poster uh, in 1800s. So in 1880s, 1890s, it was given like uh, pneumonia is a very uh, serious serial killer. And uh, during that time of uh, thing, like early 1900s and the late 1800s, uh, TB is regarded as the number one killer in Western countries. So this was the time, the pneumonia, which overtook the TB and it came to first place. So this was a poster, it was uh, published in the newspaper that day. So they were giving awareness like to stay safe. So they don't know how it is spread and uh, why it is spread. So that was the time that. So it was regarded uh, by Hippocrates as uh, uh, in, the, in the notes of Hippocrates as uh, it's a serious disease and patient do come with uh, severe chest pain. So that is nothing but empyema. So if we drain the empyema, patient do improve. So that was the thing which was described by Hippocrates. So pneumon means lungs in the Greek. So yes, so the, the person whom we are seeing the left side of the screen is not no one but Edwin Klebs. So Edwin Klebs is a brilliant scientist. He was the first one to identify the uh, bacteria and the airways of the people who died of pneumonia in 1875. So he was the one who found out uh, many secretions in the airways of the people who are dying there. And uh, uh, he just uh, thought it could be some kind of infection. So uh, he developed a gram strain. So with the use of gram strain, he uh, he identified the bacteria. So bacteria and uh, after that the grams came into the picture and he modified the strain and uh, it all came, uh, it all developed like anything. So in initial time, Edward Klebs was the first person to identify the pneumonia, like bacteria which is causing pneumonia. He suggested that it is caused by a bacilli. So his bacilli is, uh, is uh, like Klebsiella, which was named uh, in the honor of his work. And he has done more number of discoveries, like uh, he inspired Robert Koch and Louis Pasteur. So Robert Koch is the one who discovered uh, TB. So this person here, he even isolated colonies of TB even before Robert Koch. And syphilis, it, even uh, like in 1875, syphilis was not, in the, not into the picture. Uh, after this 25 years only, they had uh, uh, discovered syphilis. But this person right here, he has even discovered syphilis, but he doesn't know like completely, but he just had a theory that he inoculated the syphilis into the organisms and he knew that it is caused by some kind of bacteria. So he, he is a pioneer in uh, infectious diseases. So the blunder which he did was, he told like every infection was caused by only bacteria and there is nothing more than other bacteria, like there is no virus, there is no parasites. So he was, he was suggesting that only bacteria was there and he even told that malaria is caused by bacteria. So later periods, many pioneers came into the picture. They developed uh, things and uh, we are here. So next uh, next is this one. So Streptococcus pneumonia and Klebsiella pneumonia, which was uh, found by Friedlander and Albert Frankel. So the picture which was on the left side is Albert Frankel. He is a German 
a scientist. So the why uh, his picture is there is because he, uh, in Germany during the time of uh, Hitler regime, before the Hitler regime, he was a very active person. But after the Hitler regime, like uh, he was stripped from his uh, doctorate degree and uh, he was thrown out. So he, uh, he later died there. But his work on Streptococcus pneumonia provided a very uh, uh, very big uh, milestone in the medical field. So it was the, it was his picture on the website. So Friedlander initial work needed gram strain, a fundamental lab test, which is used to categorize bacteria. So gram positive and gram negative. Initially, it was thought only gram positive. Then they identified that there is a, another category of bacteria, which are called gram negative bacteria. So, so this, this person is called Hobart Ryman. So he is the one who is first person to coin the term atypical pneumonia. Atypical pneumonia means like it is also caused by virus. It is also caused by other organisms other than streptococcus, like mycoplasma, legionella, everything. So he is a very, uh, very important person in the field of infectious diseases. So he has made, published more than 300 papers and he has worked around many universities. Like uh, his way of approach uh, provided a new path to upcoming microbiologist and infectious disease specialist. And uh, yes, with, with help of these, kind, these people, we are able to uh, move forward in the field of medicine. So the important discovery, which was that is the first antibiotic. The person on the left side of the screen is none other than Alexander Fleming. And the right side is Wilson Churchill. So Alexander, the, Alexander Fleming is the person who found penicillin. Initially, the penicillin was found as the, described in the PPT. It was uh, found in 1928. But uh, the Winston Churchill was treated by sulfapyridin. So sulfapyridin, sulfa group of antibiotics were used initially to treat pneumonia. And the penicillin discovery was not even appreciated up to the age of 1940s. So 19, from the 1940s only, people uh, tend to, uh, like they even listened after 1940, from 1920 to 1940, they didn't even listen to Alexander Fleming. So from 1940, everything changed. So mortality dropped to 30 percentage. And 1970s, from the age of 1970s, there is vaccination and uh, everything which brought an end to deaths by pneumonia. So these are the milestones which I would like to bring to bring into the picture so that we should remember the legends. So now we go to the te technical aspects. So pneumonia, pneumonia is nothing but an infection of the alveoli, like air, uh, alveoli is in the airways, and it can be caused by bacteria, virus, and fungus and others. So risk factors, risk factors like higher age group and lower age group can be risk factor. Smoking history, the people who tend to smoke do have very lung, low lung immunity. And there are certain uh, factors which aggravate the additions of the bacteria to the persons who smoke. And alcoholic, alcoholic people usually tend to aspirate a lot. And these aspirations can pave way for a bacteria to colonize in the uh, air, uh, airway. So immunocompromised individuals, as we all know, their immunity is very, very low. So they tend to get every infection which are present in the, uh, which are present in the environment. COPD asthma, so heart failure, diabetes, neurological illness. So neurological illness patient like stroke, uh, uh, CVA patients, they do have muscle weakness and the cough reflex is very, very low. So when the cough reflex is very, very low, people tend to aspirate things a lot. So these uh, bacteria from the aspirates, they do cause infection. And uh, other, uh, other uh, chronic conditions which are not mentioned here is bronchiectasis. Bronchiectasis is nothing but uh, it's a irreversible dilatation of the airway, which is uh, beyond the terminal bronchiole. So this uh, bronchiectasis patients do have very bad lung and they colonize many bacteria, especially pseudomonas. So pseudomonas is the most common colonizer in the case of bronchiectasis and they do get uh, more exacerbation. So symptoms of pneumonia. So can be there, and it can even also come without fever, with body pains. So cough with or without expectoration. Some can be a blood in sputum. Usually in case of pneumonia with klebsiella, sputum is rusty in color. So that is uh, that can uh, that, that gives a clue that which can be the organism. And blood in sputum with uh, fever is also a diagnosis for tuberculosis. It, Suspicious for tuberculosis, sorry. So we have to even work for tuberculosis. And patient with acute uh, pneumonia will come with confusion. 
So patient will be in the confused status and patient will be very, very breathless and the, they have even diarrhea. In viral pneumonia, diarrhea is a very common symptom. Patient do come with uh, spits. They have a lot of spitting and you can see it very much abnormally and people tend to be restless. So and they have breathlessness and this breathlessness do cause restlessness and the people will be like uh, sick looking and very toxic looking patients. So you can identify them like by the looks only, like they have some uh, very serious kind of infection. So how can we diagnose pneumonia? So there are many aspects. So signs, symptoms are the things which the patients tell. So signs are the things which we observe. So we observe the acute to subacute history in case of pneumonia. So tachypnea, respiratory rate, which is more than 20, 25 to 30, 30, more than 30 is usually taken. So more than 30. Tachycardia, patient who have tachycardia, like more than 100 beats per minute. And patient who have hypotension, like BP is very, very low. So usually they uh, you have to start them on inotropes. Confused status, they don't even, uh, they, they look very much confused. When you have a conversation with them, they, they were, uh, they look like they were not oriented properly. And hemoptysis, in few cases, people can present hemoptysis. In case of fungal pneumonia, it's very, very common. So hemoptysis, chest pain, yes. In case of empyema, if the patient has pneumonia, which has progressed to empyema, empyema is nothing but infection of the pleural space, and the pleural pain is very much uh, like purulent thing, and they can cause chest pain. So cyanosis can be a symptom. Cyanosis is nothing but Lewis distillation of skin. Central cyanosis, peripheral cyanosis. There are two kinds of cyanosis. Patients can come with both. So on examination of a respiratory system, you can find crackers. Crackles can be there, like fine inspiratory crackles are present in the area of consolidation. And decreased breath sounds in case of pleural effusion, that paranemonic effusion or empyema. So they have decreased breath sounds. And bronchial breathing can be observed in case of cavitating pneumonia. If the cavity, if there is a cavity there, and if you are aspirating there, you can find bronchial breathing there. So it gives a clue. These are the signs which we can clinically conclude that patient has pneumonia. So there is a, just a provisional diagnosis. So assessment. So if you see, if, the, if you find the patient is having a pneumonia, we have to assess them. So there are few bedside assessment scores which are very much easy for uh, any person so that we can see whether the patient needs admission or not. So among them, very famous one is CURB 65. So CURB 65, uh, so CURB 65, like nothing is uh, like, C for confusion, U for urea, that is more than seven, uh, seven millimole in the sense like more than 45. Uh, respiratory is more than 30, 30 per minute, that is uh, tachypnea. And the blood pressure is less than 90. And the age is more than 65. Each is given one one point. So on, uh, on, uh, uh, if you are calculating the results and that the score is zero or one, patient can be treated OP, OP basis. Like you can give them an antibiotic and you can send them home. If the score is two, hospital stay is needed. If the score is three to five, definitely ICV is needed. And other things which are not described in the score is if the patient is having a, a hypoxia, patient definitely re, need an admission in ICU. If the patient has an hypotension, he definitely needs an ICU. And uh, these are things which are not mentioned in the score. So, other score is CARB score. It is similar to the CARB 65. So 65 is nothing but a age score. So you have CARB score. So CARB score is nothing but uh, it's a proper clinical score, like C for confusion, O for oxygen status less than 90 percentage, R for respirated at more than 30, and blood pressure, which is less than 90. So CARB score. So if the two of the features are present, it is regarded as severe gap. But since it is for the CARB score is low, so this another score is a smart CARB. Smart cough is nothing but S for systolic BP, which gives two points for systolic BP. Multilobular infiltrates in the X ray or CT. So, if you are taking a radiology thing, if you have infiltrates in more than a lobe, so you are giving them one point there. So, albumin, uh, like if, there, if it is less than three point, like it is not 35. So, uh, respiratory rate is more than 25 per minute, like tachypnea, tachycardia, confusion, oxygenation status. And pH is less than 7.35. Usually in patient, you know, or patients of hypoxia, we do an ABG. So if the patient is acidemic, we give them two points. So, so results are 
like one to two points low risk of mortality three to four points you have patient at three to four points not at risk for mortality patients six points high risk for mortality if it is more than seven 30 to 30 like 33 percent of mortality 